Uh, hi, Miss the Days, when saying the line, I need to return some videotapes, got you out of any situation. Would you like to go out with me Friday night? I need to return some videotapes. Hey, Caleb, wanna get together and play some poker? I need to return some videotapes. Okay, honey, so the rehearsal dinner is at seven tomorrow. Are you gonna be there? I need to return some videotapes. Honey, the baby's crowning! Get me to the hospital! I need to return some videotapes. Grandson, I just want to see you one last time before I go. Videotapes, Grandma. I have to return them. <laughs> American Psycho, released in the year 2000, and is directed by Mary Heron, who is also behind such films like I Shot Andy Warhol, The Notorious Betty Page, The Moth Diaries, and Charlie Says. And it is based on a novel that was released in 1991 of the same name, which I have not read, which I'm sure there are some commenters out there that's going to say, well, my review of this film is now going to be null and void, because I haven't read the book. So how would I know anything? <laughs> because my philosophy is you shouldn't have to read the book before you go see the movie adaptation. The film adaptation should do just fine on its own. Let me at him, let me at him. And this film is starring the very creepishly Christian Bale, Willem Dafoe, Jared Leto, Josh Lucas, Samantha Mathis, and Reese Witherspoon. Based in the late 1980s, Patrick Bateman, played by Christian Bale, is very strict on keeping a healthy diet and a healthy skincare regimen, and is doing quite well for himself on Wall Street. But Bateman has a secret nightlife where he goes around finding random women on the street and murders them. However, as times change and Bateman feels like he is being left behind with all of his Wall Street friends, his murderous tendencies are starting to bleed over into his day life. So now Bateman is struggling between his two psyches of being the well-off Wall Street man and being a serial killer. And right off the bat, I thought that this film was released in the 80s. Kudos to the director and kudos to the cinematographer, because watching this thing, I'm thinking, yeah, this film came out in the 80s. The costuming, the technology, the graininess of the camera. I thought this was an 80s film, but it's only set in the 80s. This film came out in the year 2000, which blows my mind. And actually, it makes sense now, because in the 80s, Christian Bale was a kid in films like Empire of the Sun, and then the early 90s. He was in Newsies. The guy was in Newsies. He's so freaking talented. I just keep thinking that this film came out in the 80s. I mean, what actor would want to see himself on screen holding a cell phone the size of that thing? It's so embarrassing. So kudos to the, the technical directors, everyone, everyone behind the scenes. The aesthetic of this film is spot on perfect. So American Psycho, I've only seen this one time before, and I do have to share this story because it's one of the most awkward things that have ever happened to me. I want to say I was a sophomore or junior in college, and I had just met my future wife, and we were living together, and one of our friends, who is a pretty awkward guy, and if he's watching this, I think he knows who he is, he was kind of just an awkward duck. But we invited him over, and I was like, hey, it's, it's October, it's Halloween season, we want to watch some scary movies. I've never seen this one before, but I hear it's really good. Let's watch American Psycho. And then you get to... The first threesome scene, when he's being just just terrible to these women, telling them very forcefully what to do, what position to stand in, what to do with genitalia of each other. It's just very, very awkward. And he's sitting over there, we're sitting over here, and it's just kind of this, this triangle effect of... Okay. I'm not sure what we got ourselves into. And then the scene moves to the actual fucking. And Christian Bale checking himself out in the mirror. <laughs> I have to laugh at the situation because I don't think I've ever been so uncomfortable in my life before than that whole situation. This creepy ass threesome that is happening on screen. It's basically watching softcore porn with this guy, who is pretty awkward, and then watching it with my future wife. It's just, it was a hurricane full of just perfect situations. So I think that's why I've never gone back to watch this thing, because it just reminds me of that <laughs> weird-ass situation. And to be honest, I probably will never go back to watch it again, because watching it for this review, it just brought back all those memories, so... 
this will probably be my, my, my second and my last viewing of American Psycho ever. So I need to make this count, and I think I need to start off by saying that this is, this is Christian Bale's film. It, it, if you had any doubts, I don't know if anyone ever did have doubts, but if you ever had any doubts of Christian Bale being just a tour de force when it comes to acting, here you go. The way the man switches from being the, the Wall Street guy to the murderous psychopath, it, it's... It's uncanny, and it is creepy as fuck. One minute he's talking to his friends about politics and Wall Street, as if he's like a, a news anchor man. And then the next thing you know, he's going in some sort of weird dissertation or a thesis statement about these bands and this music that he listens to. And then all of a sudden he morphs into the weird, raging, murderous psychopath by ripping out your jugular with his teeth, and then dropping a chainsaw on you while you escape down a staircase. The man is freaking talented. Now, you'll find yourself asking why a lot in this film. Why is he doing this? Why does he do what he does? What happened in his life to cause him to have these murderous tendencies? And I don't know if it does it in the book, but in this film, you're not getting those answers. In fact, when we get to the final line of the film, it basically tells you that this whole thing was really for nothing. There was no catharsis, there was no change to this character, there was no change or progression to our protagonist. So what was the point of this whole thing? And when you realize that that is what happens at the very end of this film, yeah, as a reviewer and as a movie viewer, I'm thinking, why, why watch this movie? If we're just gonna watch someone just go through this weird, strange life and not change. At all. That's Storytelling 101. Our protagonist is opposed by an antagonist, whether that is a person, whether that's a concept, whether it's a society, and we see them fight back against the antagonist to eventually where they need to change themselves, where they need to transform themselves in some way, shape, or form, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually or intellectually, but they change for the better and then there's some type of resolution. That is all out the window here because our main character, our protagonist, is not reliable at all. He lies to us, the audience, and yes, that's, that's intriguing and it's an interesting character choice, but it can be a detriment to your storytelling process. At one point, Bateman is telling us one thing, and then in the next scene, sometimes he changes his identity and his name is someone else, or maybe his mindset is different on someone. And then maybe it switches back and then we're back to the original Bateman. It's very confusing and at times uneven and very hard to follow. And I can see as a screenwriter, as a director, that may seem nice on a sheet of paper, but seeing it in film form and on the screen, it, it doesn't work 100% of the time. And it all leads to the majority of the audience thinking that, was this whole thing dreamt up? Did this happen at all? Or did this not happen? I'm, I'm confused. Which apparently was not the intention of Mary Heron at all, the director. She's done interviews where she said, no, I never meant for people to think that this was all a dream or that this all didn't happen. It all happened. And when I watch those interviews, I go, oh, okay, so that's you, that was your concept. But I'm sorry, that's not what, at least, what I was getting while watching it. I guess I'm, I'm kind of spoiling the whole thing, so I apologize, just light spoilers here, but really at the end we're thinking that, oh, this, everything that happened here, the people that he killed, his situation that he's going through, never really happened. Or did it? I don't know. And, and that's where I'm getting the whole dream sequence. So there's a disconnect between the concept of the director and what is actually on screen and what the audience is feeling and what the audience is seeing. However, I will say that the overall concept of this film is toxic masculinity. And that comes across just, it's a punch in the face. And unfortunately, I think that this toxic masculinity that we see in this film happens way too much nowadays. The film is 20 years old, it takes place in the 80s, so in essence, this whole concept is 40 years old, and it's still going on today. Bateman sees the other sex and the other genders as less than, and he is so self-focused on himself and on his status, his business card, how nice of a print it is, and how nice of cardstock it is, and how it compares to his friends. And if someone else has something better than him, that jealous monster just rages out of him. And it goes for his friends too. Everyone is so just focused on themselves and their personal status in their, in their friend circle and in their society that they actually forget 
who is who in their friend's circle. People are being called the wrong names all the time in this film. And why? Because all of these men are just so focused on themselves and they're such selfish bastards that they can't take the time to learn someone's name or to give a damn about anyone else but themselves. It just shows how much of a jerk men can be. And yeah, unfortunately, this still happens today. I try not to be at all like these people. So if anything, if this film comes out and shows you, hey, if you are a man, if you identify yourself as a man, here's what not to do, then I think it's done its job perfectly. But in the end, like I said, I think this film is is very uneven, and I think there's a disconnect with the directorial concepts and what we got on screen that the audience is seeing and the messages that the audience is getting from it. And it's very hard to get through this film. After watching it, I was bogged down because just seeing this culture of toxic masculinity and seeing just this asshole, this terrible person of Patrick Bateman, just felt bogged down and depressed after watching it. So if you are going to watch this, I mean, watch it for Christian Bale's performance alone. It's it's wonderful and he's perfect. It's a, it's a tour de force of acting. In terms of concept and storytelling, it's a bit of a trudge. So uh, you'll get through it, but definitely watch this for Christian Bale. I'm going to give American Psycho three out of five Blu-rays. Not exactly what I had in mind, but not bad. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next at random. And I've kind of grouped all of my Halloween movies together into a list, put them into the random generator. So let's take a look at what pops out. I have a couple of recommendations that we're going to be doing this month, but also want to do some random ones. So let's take a look here. Loading. To your last death. Yes, I'm... I was hoping it would come up. I saw an advertisement for this film on the movie streaming site Voodoo, and the, the whole concept looked very interesting to me. It's an animated movie about these people that I think get locked in a video game or something, and they have to go around killing zombies, I think. All I know is that William Shatner was one of the voices of this thing, so I was like, yes, I am in. And the category says horror, so it works for the whole horror theme in the month of October. So I am super excited to finally check that one out. Hey, if any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, leave a comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter. Leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout on the channel. And if you want to help support me in building this channel up to something bigger than what it's been for the last three years, or if you really want me to do your movie recommendation as quickly as possible, you can make a paper PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. And just attach your movie to your donation. And if I have access to it, I will watch it and get it done as quickly as possible. So guys, if you've seen American Psycho, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm going to release my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of To Your Last Death. So in the meantime, be well be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.